G'day everyone, Greg here from Fresh Fate Films and welcome back to the BNSF Purpose of Vision. And it's been quite a while between drinks again, but uh, things have been pretty busy with my Airbnb with our lockdowns and that here. Uh, because I live so close to the city, I've had lots of people booking in who work regionally to come down to Brisbane to do work. So I've been pretty much flat out with that. Not a lot of work on the layout at all. Plus my office is downstairs and I can't edit down there while I have guests, which is fair enough. But I have been working on a video that I'd like to do for a long time regarding, ah, uh, where are we? Wheels, train wheels. Now we all think they just go round and round and they have a flange on them and all that sort of thing to keep the wheels on the track. Well, that's not quite right. And train wheels are actually very complicated things and their profile is very complicated. So I wanted to do a video on that and also combine that with a video on DPUs, uh, distributed power units, and why they help trains become longer and more efficient depending on where you put them in the train it's not just the extra horsepower it's where they're placed in the train makes a difference on how efficient the train runs over the rail so i thought i could replicate that in the model uh, because the forces that we use in the model and on real life are exactly the same we have buff forces which are compression and we have stretch forces or stress which are uh, pulling forces and they're pretty much the same as real life but it's been a bit of a struggle uh, to do it and uh, I've had a few problems that I thought would be very easy. And one of the problems is, well, I'll show you. Let's, let's just go through some of the issues I've had trying to film this video, which will be coming up in a few weeks, but this is just a bit of a teaser uh, and let you know that I'm still here, but being very busy. All right, let's have a look at some of the issues I've had. Now, issue number one, I've had a visitor. I did get the odd mouse in here every now and then, but it wasn't a problem, but I've had a rat move in, and as you can see, he's had a go at eating Bob's trees there. He didn't like the foam, but of course he moved on to my sea foam trees and has completely eaten every tree that I've planted on the layout. And you can see here's one here that he's moved. Now, of course, he doesn't like the, uh, the glue and everything on them and the, uh, the leaves, but he's given it a good go. Now, of course, as I said in my track cleaning video, Rat piss is a really good insulator. So I've had heaps of problems uh, cleaning the track with inox, with the old inox, and I've had to run my uh, old track cleaning car through all the places that I can't get to because there was rat piss everywhere. Because, where are we, especially up here. There we go, in the old Tarragindi cutoff here. That was like a little rat highway and uh, yeah, I had to basically push trains through there to get them going in there once. A couple of times the old inox over the track and we're all good. But uh, it's caused a problem, of course, on the Helix as well. And, you know, he loves walking around the Helix and going up through here. A little bastard. So he's got to go. This is the old track cleaning car I used. An old Roco thing. I just put a rag underneath there with an inox and I push that through. Couple of passes with that, and uh, we're good to go. But that's so. That's the first problem. Uh, the second problem is uh, rat piss. Not only is it a good insulator, it's a very good friction modifier. It's a good sticking agent, and you get more tractive effort. Hmm. Uh, which is not a good thing. I'll show you. What. So the idea was to put a train up the helix and get it to stall just stall with three locomotives up the front and then move one locomotive uh, as a DPU throughout the train and show you the difference it has on tractive effort and that has to do with wheels and everything but first problem since the there we ripped the draft gear out of this uh, Atlas hopper car here and it was up the front of the train which then sent the rest of the train down the helix and luckily I heard it and managed to catch it, but these three well cars went over the side and I think I've broken that off and I think that's, hopefully these will be okay. These are the um, BLMA ones, which are very nicely detailed, but they're all plastic, there's no weight in them. And I had them up the front, near up the front, and Anyway, we were very lucky that no more damage occurred there. But we ripped the R straight out of that. Yeah, this is our stack, stack train that you know, runs around the layout. It's normally 
different configurations, but on this particular occasion we had two Kato's, two Dash 9's, and a, I think this is an ES44DC intermount up the front there. Uh, now, does anyone know if I can get new mount motors for intermount? I've got to see Arthur about that, because these run like a piece of shit. They always have done, the motors are a problem, and hopefully, I can get new motors for them because they're quite nicely detailed in the mountain, but gee, they run badly. Anyway, this train up here, could, well, normally I can get the stall on the helix by adding a few extra cars. I tried doing that and I was adding more and more cars and it kept going. I think it's getting very good traction today. Now, the problem was, all right, let me get around here. The Locos wheels covered in rat piss. Where's the camera? I never know where to look. I'm using my iPhone today because I want to get this video out. Uh, yeah, that's why. Where's the camera? <laughs> anyway, the Locos uh, had a little bit of rat pee on them and was giving them extra traction. And I kept loading on the cars. Now, normally, uh, a train uh, up the helix, about 35, 36 cars for three units. That's about it. And I got up to 40 something and I thought, these are pulling incredibly well today. I don't know why is that. And the next minute, bang, we broke that draft gear. So that was a problem. And that sort of, uh, yeah, stopped that idea. So now I've had to rethink it. And we're, I'm going to have to get a different train with heavier cars because a lot of these stack train cars here are quite light. So, Normally I put the Kato well cars up the front because the Kato well cars are metal. They're quite heavy. But for some reason I had these BLMA up the front and then I had that hopper car. It was just a disaster. The whole thing's been a disaster. So <laughs> that's why. That's what's happened. Um, so I've had to fix all that. I'm going to have to make up a train that uh, will stall on the Helix without being uh, too, too long, too heavy. And then I will show you how moving the DPU throughout the train has a different effect on its performance. And also why wheels are machined a certain way. So that's coming up. Right, first thing, kill the rat and its family. That's it, it's gone, it's out. Second thing, uh, build a different train uh, with heavier cars that won't streamline and won't rip the guts out of draw bars. I'm, normally, you know, if I get too over anxious or over keen with cars, I'll stall trains on the Helix all the time. But for some reason, uh, that little bit of a rat pass and probably dirt and other things that were on the locomotive wheels that it's picked up were giving it a lot more traction. Normally, uh, I'm up the Helix, depending on the locomotive, it's about 12 cars per loco, and that's, so that's 36 cars there. Somewhere between 30 and 36 cars is about it for the Helix, depending on the logo. Well, I was up to 45 or something, and the, just the extra dirt on the wheels was getting all that traction, and um, that was the limit for the poor old drawbar on that car. So anyway, so we'll fix that. We'll put a heavier train on with heavier cars. No, don't use the stack train. And we'll get this video done. So it's very interesting. Uh, the wheel rail profile of railroads is very, very interesting. There's a lot in it. So, there you go, and also DPUs. Uh, there's a lot in DPUs. Uh, where you put them, how much horsepower they can have, and all that sort of thing too, so interesting stuff. Anyway, that's it, just a quickie. In the next couple of weeks, hopefully, we'll have this video up, and uh, it should be interesting and fun to watch. Take care, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon back on the Birdwood Sun. Hooray for now, bye-bye.